Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry and today we're going to talk about things all role players do or axioms of role play. An axiom, remember, is something that's true within a specific context. So today we're going to talk about axioms when it comes to text-based role players. These are things that I have found to be true no matter who you're role playing with, no matter what you're role playing, or no matter where you're role playing. These are things that if you've been watching my videos for a while, you've probably heard me say at least once or twice, but I wanted to take all of these concepts and put them into one video. The first axiom is everyone wants to feel special. So what does that mean? Your life is boring or hard or it sucks. So you come to role play to feel special in a way that you can't feel in your everyday life. Because of this, there is a strong urge for a lot of role players to have the most attractive, most badass, most extra, most whatever character. This could be something positive, but it might also take a negative form. Maybe someone doesn't get the support that they need in reality, so they come into role play and they make the most pitiable character. This puts the other characters in the position of caretaker, and it becomes their job to manage the emotions of the other character. Role play is inherently escapist in nature, and once you understand this, then you understand that everyone wants to feel special. This means that making the most extra whatever character isn't going to be met with a warm welcome. It's going to be met with an eye roll. If your character is the most special, then what you're communicating to others is that their character isn't allowed to be. So when you know everyone wants to feel special, you can structure your characters in such a way that sometimes they get the limelight and sometimes others get the limelight too. Sometimes a threat is about your character and sometimes it's about the other person's character. And this sort of segues into my second axiom of role play. No one cares about your character as much as you do. You have spent time building that character on your own. You've spent time potentially playing that character in previous threads with other partners before the one that you're in right now. So you have spent far more time with your character than your partner has. So if you're expecting your partner to instantly fall for your character, that's not going to happen. It took time for you to fall for your own character. So it's going to take time for your partner to fall for your character too. Be patient with your partner or whatever role play group you've just joined. If you've made a good character and you're actively role playing with your partner or in your community, eventually they will fall for your character too. If that doesn't happen, then you probably need to examine your character creation process or potentially who you're role playing with. This also extends to role play groups, of course, where you've spent time building the world and building the rules and all of the things for that group. It's unlikely someone who's just found your group is going to instantly fall for it. So patience is key with this axiom. So if no one loves your character as much as you do and everyone wants to feel special, what does that mean for the role play experience overall? It means you're not always going to be number one and that's okay. Sometimes your character won't be able to take the spotlight. Sometimes you're going to make a role play group and it's just not that popular or it fails instantly. Sometimes you're going to try out new plots or tropes and discover that you don't like them. Sometimes it's going to take practice to master certain aspects of role playing. All of this is perfectly fine. If you're expecting greatness instantly in a largely subjective, collaborative hobby, you're going to be disappointed. This hobby doesn't work like that. And that's okay. The payoff that you experience when a role play goes really well is worth the patience and the work it took to get there. How do we get there though? That brings me to our fourth axiom. Being respectful and kind out of character matters far more than anything you do in character. You could also call this no one cares how good of a writer you are if you're a jerk. Role play is collaborative and no one wants to collaborate with a jerk. This is shockingly to me a pretty controversial thing to say in some role play circles, but it's true. If literally everyone is ghosting you, if literally every group that you make fails, if literally everyone that you role play with is an illiterate hack, there's a common denominator here. The problem isn't other role players or the role play community. The problem is you. Self-awareness is hard. It's time consuming, it's difficult, and it can be exhausting. 
but this is a collaborative hobby. You can't role play by yourself. And that means part of being good at role play is having a good personality yourself. If you have a difficult personality, role playing is going to be difficult for you. Now, that being said, you don't have to get along with everyone. That's pretty impossible. It's not going to happen. Everyone has preferences. So that brings me to my fifth axiom. And this is the last axiom we're going to talk about today, but it's role play is writing for an audience of one. Yes, chat room role plays exist. Yes, threads with multiple players in them exist, but the vast majority of role play is done between one person and one other person in a thread with their characters. This is true even in most group settings. And what that means is when you're writing a reply to your partner, all of this writing advice, all of this character creation advice, all of this social skill advice that I'm giving you, if you are happy and your partner is happy, none of it matters. And that's true even in the extreme. If you and your partner are both cool with metagaming and power playing and all of those things that most role players find incredibly annoying, then go for it. If you're both happy, it's fine. There's no reason to stop doing it just because other people don't like it, so long as you and your partner are happy. Who cares what the rest of the roleplay community thinks? And that's what I'd like to leave you with today. So let me know down below if there's other things that you find in the roleplay community that tend to be true across the board, like some of the things that we've talked about today. I'm curious if there's any other things that you guys have noticed. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, whatever engagement features YouTube adds in the future, do it all. What you're seeing on screen right now are the names of all of my $5 and up patrons. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. If you'd like to be included or get other fun perks, link to my Patreon in the description down below. And as always, don't forget to make it a great day.